Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Woodland Life series. I'm here with Ben in his woods and in this episode he's going to be showing you all about how to make a wooden roof tile or a shingle, or sometimes they're called shakes. So without further ado, let's head on over to Ben and learn how to make them. So we're looking for a piece of ash that ideally is quite free of knots or branches that have been on it or lumps which where there would have been a branch or a knot because it's going to be a lot easier to split. There could be a section there so this bit isn't very good but there could be a piece here so I'll, I'll take that one out first. You can see it's got three hearts there which means it's got some branches coming through it somewhere um, so that will not split nicely at all. One, two, three. That's a, that's not an ideal candidate for shingles. It wants to be as straight and as clean as possible. So we'll have a look at some of these lower logs. That's why these are left here because they weren't. So they should split. This one might be a little bit problematic on that side where there was a branch, but we'll try and split that off first and then, uh, yeah, they should be good. You can see the difference. Obviously, there's no multiple knots, was there? Yeah, so out. it's just a single heart there. Yeah, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite an evenly grown tree as well. So when it's in the, roughly in the centre, it means it's grown nicely on its own rather than... Rather than having the centre over here sort of thing. ...another tree where most of, it is, the, most of the light has been on one side. So it's quite an evenly grown standard. So this is birch leaf tea. Birch leaf tea. Yeah. Looking forward to trying this. With added bits in it. Yeah, cheers. cheers. That's lovely. That's actually really nice. It's a really nice yeah. tea. Yeah, I like that. Seems to be the trend. Myself and Ben keep doing, he keeps doing different teas every time I come. <laughs> Yes, last time it was um, bramble tips, the new shoots. Bramble, wasn't it? bramble tip tea, yeah. This is lovely though. And we've had um, birch poly pour tea, mm. and this is birch leaf tea. Full of good stuff. Yeah, vitamin C, antioxidants, good for your kidneys and your livers. Those things, you either collect them in springtime. So when I collect roots, it's usually around spring or autumn. Yeah. So it's when the energy is still there, yeah. waiting to come out or reduced back into the roots. So. Yeah, I think yeah. That's, that's the reason, Mike. With the shingle making, Mike, these are my main three tools that I use. Um, I've got my Thor hammer, which is a good heavy hammer. I mean, you can use a beetle, which is um, a lump of wood. This is really heavy, and when I'm cutting shingles this size, um, I really need something that's quite manly for the job. The second tool is the fro. Now, I don't know if many people have seen a fro. This is a Grands Falls Buck, Brux fro. Um, they're, uh, are they Swedish or Swedish? Swedish, yeah. Swedish make, they make very good tools. I'm not endorsing it, I'm just telling you they make very good tools. And it's got a good solid blade on it and a very strong handle uh, because you're gonna need to hit this a lot. So this is for splitting. And this is my uh, little ax, my little, again, Grands Falls Brux side ax, um, which I use for trimming the sides down um, once we've split the shingles. So when I've got my, uh, my round, what I'll do is I'll look at it and usually where it's been cut there, there are already some lines forming on the top. So what I'll probably do is I'll use one of these to start with um, because there's obviously wanting to split there. So I'll turn it round, get that parallel to me and then I'll get my throat and I place it across the line. And then we're going to split it in the middle first because what you need to try and do is, is, is split it through the centre and then you'll work from the centre out to the back. Um, that's how I found the best way. And that went a lot easier than I expected. And it's lovely straight grain on it, isn't it? Yeah, that's not bad. That's, that's not bad for a shingle. That'll be okay. But what happens is when you when you split like this the reason why this is so weatherproof is because you're keeping most of the grain intact 
So along there, all that is still in one parallel. There's no, it's, it's not broken in any place. So therefore the weather and the water and moisture um, and any sort of bacterias or funguses that might want to attack this have more trouble getting in through that grain because it's closed than when you've cut through it. Um, so when you machine shingles, they tend to uh, absorb more moisture and more bacterias and things like that because um, the end grain is open, therefore things can get into it. So this is a really weatherproof way of creating uh, a roof tile by splitting it with a fro. What I'm aiming for is about 14 millimeters. Thereabouts, 14, 15 millimeters. Um, this first one probably won't come off very well, but it, sh it might. The first one usually breaks out a little bit. Yeah, so this is quite a tough log because it's been down for a while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my clamp, so I've cut a notch in this log here, specifically for this shingle making. So what we do is we put that there. Because I can't pull this, it's too tough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp that on there. So that's the first one, which is quite rough. But you would get two small shingles out of that, but um, I probably wouldn't use it personally. We'll keep that a spare. So this one should come out okay. Beautiful, there we go. Look at that. That is a nice shingle. That made a really satisfying sound. Really satisfying well. sound, yeah. <laughs> so that's the start. So if you want to look around here, Mike, I'll show you this. So that's how we've left our piece. So it's not got much open grain on there at all. It's got a few because it's because we're taking off, if I were to cut this in half, it would split evenly. But because we're taking off less off this side and we're leaving more on this side, it tends to want to run out of the bottom. But it, it will do a little bit, but not much. So it's, this is the best way I've found of making them. And it's nice and straight grain as well, so we should get a few good shingles out of this. So because the wood is the same thickness as my fro, That was what my problem was. So we're going into a knot. So there's a knot coming through there, around here somewhere. And it's, uh, that side's fine, which I started cutting from, and this edge, but you can see how this is forming in here, which is why I had uh, trouble getting that one off. So the selection of your wood is very important um, so you don't waste your energy, really. So that one didn't come out great, but we'd still use that because actually that would be the lower side. And so this one would be covered like that. So actually that is not a wasted shingle. Um, so even though that top pit looks knackered. Even though knackered, that top piece looks knackered, we can still nail it in here and here, and that's still covered. So it's, it's, it's still a good shingle. What other wood species would be good for this? And it, not just the UK, but worldwide as well, would you say? Um, I mean, we're using ash today, but it's not known as uh, an external wood. Um, but because of the, the pitch that I've used my ash on my roof, it's not gonna, you know, if you had a low pitch, you wouldn't want to use ash because it would hold the water too much and therefore rot. It's a really steep pitch, it would be fine. Um, a lot of woods that I've used before uh, sweet chestnut is a very good wood for shingles. It grows tall, straight. Um, you get some really clean uh, rings from it, so you can cut very neat shingles. And also it contains uh, tannic acid, so the same as oak. Oh, okay. So it, it, um, it, it has its own natural 
like rot resistant rot resistance and and weatherproof um so i would if i were going to make shingles from any species i would probably either choose sweet chestnut or oak sometimes i do this on the floor so you stand on it like that oh i see so a lot of time i'll make shingles low down and i'll do this and then You saw how difficult that is to try and split those when you're splitting across the entire length of this. So my throw is only, like I say, about 12 inches and that piece of wood is about 11 inches. Um, so it's quite hard work. So what you can do is you can take this down the middle uh, because shingles don't, you know, they don't all need to be big. You need to have the various sizes and they will all be various sizes. So what I tend to do to make it easier is to split this like that and then we start again with our shingles on the thaw hammers you get a hide side so this is uh, pig hide uh, for when you're hitting wood so I use this for making uh, frames so oak frames when you're putting together oak frames you need a really heavy hammer and the hide, if you soak that in water. So if I were gonna use this, I would leave that in the water like that and it would soak the hide. And then when I come to use it, that would be soft. And so when I hit um, the oak, it doesn't damage it or dent oh, okay. it. So it's, it's a good all purpose hammer. Clever. And then you've got the metal for the, the And then you've got the metal work. bit for hitting hard things. Um, usually when, again with oak framing, I use the metal end for banging in the uh, oak pegs. The next stage is to actually look at their, their width and they need to be parallel so when you're laying them you want all your shingles to be parallel either side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, I mean that is quite parallel anyway, but what we'll do is we'll trim these up. If it wasn't parallel, I would just straighten it. So that side axe has the bevel only on one side? Is that yeah, so it, so it cuts, it doesn't glance off, it cuts where you put it. But if I hit it at that angle, it should go in at that angle, whereas a, a normal axe with a double bevel would glance off. I see, yeah. Um, but a side axe should stick in. What I'm doing, I'm going to look at these, and that, that side's okay. I'll just trim it a little bit like that. And that side, I'll trim the back out a little bit. Just so it sits flat, and then I look down there and just trim that bit there. That's quite nice. That bit could do a coming off. Just so it doesn't stand out on, on any given point. See again that where that knot was. And another shingle wouldn't sit flat on there. So if you put that, that would keep it raised. So if you tried to put a shingle there, it would be raised. So you've got to look at these areas and just take that off. And that sits like that. That sits flat. So this edge, where I put my throw in first, which is even, is always the downside because it's a nice and even edge. And then if I need to do any trimming up here, that's always hidden by another shingle. So it's not going to cause any problems weather-wise. Um, so we always try and keep the lower section of the shingle clean. Because so Is that, that because when you split it, normally the top section, you, the bottom section, sorry, that technically is when you're cutting it. Yeah, so it that's normally going to end up splitting out or... Yeah, it will run off or, some yeah. way or another. Because like I say, if you're not cutting directly through the centre of something, it wants to split unevenly. Mm. So it's, it, it does split a little bit unevenly, but not too much. So what we do is we take the good edge, which we put our throw on first, and that's the edge we use yeah. as, our, as our down edge, as our, I don't know what you call it, leading edge maybe? Yeah. Therefore it's always undamaged.
and then the next one will be even better. Yeah, I can see what you mean. It's, get, it's progressively. So that one, yeah. But we, we can use that one. That's, that's still usable because you can cover yeah. it. Yeah. 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 You want them? Yeah. Fall off in your hand. It's a lovely axe to use. It is, isn't it? It's so different to, to, to obviously a normal axe with a double. So I mean, bend. it cuts where you where you yeah. put it rather than. It doesn't run off. No. So that's still. we've got here is we've knocked up a practice frame so we can show you how to lay the shingles and what I'm going to do with these I'm just using small galvanized nails um, not very big they don't really need to be too thick and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start nailing these on usually you would you would kick the bottom tile out so there would be a double um, button here that would kick the bottom tile out so stop the water running down straight it kicks it out and sends it out a bit further um, and also it keeps the, the the shape of it nicely because the last tile all the other tiles are going to be sitting on a tile so the last tile doesn't have anything to sit on so if you double the baton at the bottom it keeps it up at the same angle as all the other tiles so what we're going to do is we're going to put the first one on and then I'll show you what I've done is I've nailed this on so that that section that I cut with the fro that way is at the bottom so each shingle I nail on is going to place like that so that's the clean edge this is the edge that was um, last if you see what i mean these are green though so what will happen is they'll shrink in the width so the width of these tiles will shrink ideally you would leave them to season once you've cut them but you don't have to just going to mix these up a bit so we're going to use a big one and a smaller one Don't worry about any gaps in between them either um, because actually they're going to be covered by another tile and it all becomes completely waterproof for the next row you want to have a tile that lands in between so you want the next each tile to cover this strip like this okay so you don't want it to you don't want it to sit like that you don't want to put your tiles on top of each other like this they need to cover the last gap even though it doesn't sit properly that's okay Is where the uh, difference in width of your tiles comes in quite useful because you can choose which one should go where as you're working through them again still covering all the gaps so making sure that every gap between the last tiles is are roughly in the centre. If you look around the side, Mike, you can see how these tiles are overlapping now. So what we've got here is we've got this top tile is actually coming over this tile. So when the water comes down here, even if it drips down onto this gap, it then falls in the centre of this tile. So as long as your gaps are always landing on another tile, it, the rain can only run down and land on another tile and keep going. Um, it can't actually get through there unless the wind is blowing really hard. Ideally, these would be a little bit closer because that, if that, those two lapped over each other a little bit more. But that's okay. That still would be weatherproof. Just make sure they're all always covering a gap. It's quite a um, fast process as well, isn't it? The actual it's really laying fast. Of the once, you, once you're going, it, it, that's it. Yeah. You can lay, lay them a lot quicker than you can make them. That's for sure. As long as they sit fairly flat, that's, that's completely waterproof. That would act as a really good roof. 
we've arrived at my uh, composting toilet that um, I made a couple of years ago now. And first of all, I made the frame and then I split all the shingles for it afterwards. I built this composting toilet with just four oak posts that are just sitting on the ground. I didn't want to put it in the ground because in the UK we're not really allowed to put foundations or any footings down for anything. So everything has to just be temporary. So this is a temporary structure that's just sitting on the ground. Um, four oak posts and then a wooden frame and then a couple of plates that hold the hazel. The door is something that I found in my workshop and I cut it down. And so what we've got is a couple of little handles and then inside is my throne. <laughs> the palace. <laughs> the palace. I like the toilet roll holder there that you've got, the way yeah. you've done it. Oh yeah, little bird's nest up there. Yeah, they're actually nesting in it now. Is that fresh now? Is that isn't it being used, that yeah. nest? Wow. Yeah, because awesome. I found oh, some yeah. on the floor and they're, they're pooping down here. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got... That is brilliant. So this is my... flush. So once we've been... Took a bit of sawdust on the top. Adios. And that's where you put your tissue. And then it gets burnt in the fire. Oh, I see. So, so that only what goes in there is ash. This is these are the um, shavings, the ash shavings from when I've been machining up my trees. So whenever I machine up the trees and create a pile of sawdust, I um, bag it up and keep it for the toilet. So that goes into the ground? No, it, it doesn't. Or no, it's into, a bucket. Just goes into so the this bucket. is just a bucket in here. And then I've got a compost heap just over there. But I'm not sure I'm ever going to use it, uh, just because it can be quite dangerous to use human manure if you haven't yeah, I suppose. heated it properly. It has to go through a certain heat treatment to, to get rid of certain pathogens and, and bacteria that we yeah. contain. I probably won't use it for growing vegetables, but I will use it um to put around the trees newly planted trees things like that yeah um because it will still give them nutrients, it will still give nutrients yeah, yeah. but you're just not for eating and yeah. just your standard roof buttons to get you so yeah, to, to get your uniform patterns buttons, which made it a bit easier because that would have been a lot of hazel to split yeah um so yeah i used the standard roof button on top of the hazel and it seems to work really well and then round the back i noticed is there there's something oh, yeah, around the back so. as well Around the back is uh, a washroom. This is uh, oh, brilliant. So when we do our charcoal making or we stay over, we've got somewhere to keep ourselves clean and do our washing up. And that just soaks down, that just goes into a soak away in the ground because um, it's only a bit of grey water. You yeah. don't use anything, you only use eco, eco products. Um, so nothing bad goes into the environment because I really don't want to be putting damaging chemicals in the woodland. Well, these are all boards that I machined up on a, a chainsaw mill. So when I first came here, I bought myself a chainsaw mill and machined up all this ash was dead. So I'm just utilizing it any way I can really. That's a serious amount of shingles as well. It's a lot. You were saying you need it gave you tennis elbow. Yeah, it does, it does hurt. <laughs> yeah. When you make this many shingles, it hurts. <laughs> Using that Thor hammer. I'm yeah. not built like Thor, so uh, <laughs> using a Thor hammer every yeah. day, all day for months at a time is yeah. hard work. It is, yeah, I bet. <laughs> what an awesome structure, though. Thank you, Mike. Very, very cool. And it's blended in so well with it's that really the nice, way yeah, it's. Um... It sits so nicely. And it will just rot it away. I'll leave it here, and eventually it will just sink into the ground and disappear. Um, so these are ash shingles, and these are what I made to cover this because I had mostly ash trees so that's what I'm using and these shingles these have been here for two years not one of them has dropped um, they did shrink a little bit because when I made them they were all green so what you see are maybe between five and ten mil gaps in between them um, some more some less but it doesn't make any difference to the function of the roof and uh, if you look at these shingles they're all just nailed on with one single nail. Um, the reason for that being that when you nail them on with one nail, they can shrink and expand and shrink and 
they don't split whereas if you put two nails in when they shrink it would split the shingle and then you lose half of it half of it would drop out because it would split where the, one of the nails went in so one nail would stay one one nail hole would split so always single nail in the top onto the whatever you're nailing onto but these have lasted really well they just color nicely um, but they're still as solid and as good as they were in the day I made them. So this is why, I, if, if it was a shallow pitch, I would have used something that was a bit more durable outside. But with a steep pitch like this, no, no rain sits on it, um, nothing sits on it, so it, it, it just washes everything off, therefore it doesn't rot. So you can get away with using things like birch or ash and woods that aren't really meant for outside when you're using them in this way.